What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation questions of the day. One, do you think that Gavin Lux's play at shortstop since he's filled in for Corey Seager will make the Dodgers less likely to sign Corey Seager to a big deal? And two, do you think the Dodgers should sign Corey Seager? And what kind of contract do you see them offering him in the offseason? Let me know down below in the comment section. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So first, we've got an injury update for my eager Seegers out there. Corey Seager was expected to start his rehab assignment at some point this weekend, but that is going to be pushed back, it looks like, until Monday. The 2020 NLCS and World Series MVP has been out of the Dodgers lineup since May 16th after he was plunked in the right hand by Marlins pitcher Ross Detweiler. It was a 90.4 mile per hour sinker, and he's been out since then. And Dave Roberts gave us an update on Corey Seager's progress, and if we can still expect to see him back in early July you know with uh, with fractures it's just every person is different as far as the healing process he's on his progression um, but it could take some time I, I think that it's one of those things it's got to heal um, the right way properly and then uh, we'll get him out when the time is but uh, I just don't have any clarity it's just you can feel with the actions um, and, and swinging of the bat until it's totally healed you know so there's i'm sure there's some residual soreness and you got to make sure that you're done with that uh so you don't you know regress uh, you know that was that was kind of my hope from the outset and uh, hopefully early july still uh, makes sense so the Dodgers need Corey Seager back as badly as NSYNC needs Justin Timberlake back because he's so important to their success. Bruh. This year so far, in 147 plate appearances, he's slashing 265, 361, 422 with a 783 OPS. And then in the month of May, in 45 plate appearances, he was slashing 289, 396, 356 with a 752 OPS. This season so far, he's hit four home runs. He has 22 RBIs. And so he's only played in 37 games this year. He has posted 122 WRC plus coming off a year last year where he had 152 WRC plus. So he really hasn't gotten going like we thought he would. We thought he would hit over 40 home runs, make the all-star game and be in the conversation as one of the best 10 to 15 to 20 players in the game. Well, so far this year, he really hasn't done that. And also, he's had his defensive miscues as well. But was he fully healthy? Was he dealing with lingering injuries too? I think that's also a possibility and he's going to come back with two and a half months or so to really get it going and really enter his free agency to try to get a big bag. And hopefully he has another big postseason run. But if you're the Dodgers and Corey Seager, where do you stand at this point? Well, before the season started, John Heyman tweeted out, like story, Baez and Correa. Like story, Baez and Correa, Corey Seager will enter the season without an extension. Dodgers made an effort on Seager, who they'd like to extend, but like the others, he will remain free agent eligible. Lindor remains the lone superstar shortstop in serious negotiations. So this is before Lindor signed his deal. And so the big takeaway there is the Dodgers did make an effort to try to extend Seager before the season started. Well, of course, his agent is Scott Boris, the Thanos of sports agents. You know what he likes to do. He strongly advocates for his clients to enter free agency and test the waters. But I'm wondering, what was that deal like? Was it a 200 to $250 million deal? Was it a high AAV, lower years deal? It's tough to tell with the Dodgers because they have a contract of 12 years, $365 million with Mookie Betts. And then they have a three-year, $102 million deal with opt-outs after each year with Trevor Bauer. He's getting 40, 45, and $12 million if he decides to opt in. So who knows what the Dodgers offered him. I assume it wasn't terribly low considering the postseason he had. But if you're Corey Seager, you bet on yourself. And so far, not so good if you're Corey Seager. You'd like to not get injured because that is the one knock on you is that you can't stay on the field. And two, you want to have a lights out year. You want to show that last year's 60 game season wasn't a fluke where you posted 153 WRC plus really your best season of your career. He was on pace to hit over 40 bombs when his previous career high was 26 back in 2015. So I think if you're the Dodgers and Corey Seager at this point, 
point, one of the big developments is the play of Gavin Lux. Now, Gavin Lux on the season, he's slashing 237, 310, 374 with a 685 OPS and 92 OPS plus. And since he's taken over at shortstop in 129 at bats, he's slashing 248, 347, 411 with a 758 OPS, has five home runs and 20 RBIs. Now, a lot of that is him just getting deeper into the season. So he's still going to have that same amount of success if he was playing second base. When you see him at shortstop, you definitely see the range. Now, there are times when he rushes some throws, he doesn't set his feet, and he kind of rushes that throw to first, but he does look the part at shortstop. If you're the Dodgers, would you consider letting Corey Seager walk if he's adamant on playing the shortstop position? That would be the question I have. What if Corey Seager says, hey, I know you guys think I don't have the range. I know you think that I make more errors than I used to, but I want to be a shortstop. There could be teams out there that are, one, willing to pay him, and two, willing to promise him that role. Now, I'm not saying the Dodgers are going to go into negotiations with Corey Seager saying, hey, if you sign with us, you have to make a position change. You have to move to third or first, or you have to be a DH. I'm not saying that. But having Gavin Lux shown that he can handle the shortstop position is a tiny little source of leverage for the Dodgers. But the big difference between these two is Corey Seager, when he's right with the bat, he's not even close to Gavin Lux at this point. Gavin Lux hasn't shown that he can be anywhere close to the hitter that Corey Seager is when he's really going. And his hit tool, the way he can hit for power, like I said, we've seen Corey Slugger now. That's what makes him so enticing. And I think if I'm the Dodgers, I kind of go into that and I really want to see what he does for the last two and a half months of the season and how he performs in the postseason because you don't want to let a bat like that get away because when Mookie and Seager are right at the top of that lineup, you got a right, you got a lefty, it's really perfect. But if you're the Dodgers, it is nice to have a contingency plan and know that you're not going to get into some crazy bidding war with a team like the New York Yankees that might be interested in signing Corey Seager. The other good thing for Corey Seager is some of the other shortstops really haven't had explosive years. Guys like Trevor Story, he's posted a 103 OPS plus. Javi Bob as a 99 OPS plus. Really the best year, you hate to say this, but it is Carlos Correa. He's slashing 262, 391, 531, has a 153 OPS plus, 14 home runs. So he's setting himself up for a big payday. So if you ask me right now, I'm going 200 to 240 million tops for Corey Seager, and I'm trying to get him to agree to a position change, whether it be third base or first base, have him play some DH now and then, but that's where I'm at with Corey Seager. As far as the gap Gavin Lux move. Yes, that is a possibility, but I do want to see more from Gavin Lux with the stick and have him be a more consistent hitter the rest of the way. So it's still a little early on that, but let's see how he finishes out his season. But let me know down below in the comments. Do you think the Dodgers should re-sign Corey Seager? What kind of deal would you offer him? And do you think the play of Gavin Lux has impacted the Dodgers' need to re-sign Corey Seager? I want your takes down below in the comments section. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at dmac underscore LA. That's at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. For the latest Dodgers news, rumors, high videos, podcasts, and more, you're going to find it right here. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. For all his Dodgers Nation t-shirts, head over to gearup.la. Some of the best Dodgers t-shirt designs in the game. You're going to find it right over there at www.gearup.la. For the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.